A lot of people have heard about the three laws of robotics that keep them from going crazy and killing people. Well, I have a notion, let's call it a loose standard, that if you build a robot, you must always be able to dominate your predecessor. This is the EasyBot MK2, the 3D printable robot arm from Carlo Francisco. These were featured items on Thingiverse. I already did a video on building the first rendition of the bot arm, but the second bot arm intrigued me because it's much larger, uses larger servos, and could probably do a lot more work. This is a great project to get started into robotics. The second bot arm is a little harder to print than the first one, but I would say it's much easier to assemble. So if you want to stick around for the build of this bot arm, we'll get into that now. Otherwise, here's just some quick robot arm action to give you an idea of how this thing works and how it was built. Now let's build. Here are all the printed parts you'll need. These parts don't need support. These do. These parts are also orientated to the table as I printed them. You'll need one base, one main arm printed on its side with support, one V arm printed with support, two number four links, one number five link angled, the upper arm printed upside down with supports. One tri-link printed with supports. A tri-link for the front gripper. A base servo gear, I use the 25 tooth. The master base gear, I use the full one, that means there's a track all the way around it. The main base part. The lower base part. The claw base. A claw finger right and a claw finger left the claw drive gear, the claw driven gear, and a cover for your base. Most of these parts where they interconnect are four millimeter bolt holes. These holes are printed really tight. I recommend going through each one of these holes with a four millimeter drill bit to clean them up before assembly. A 5 30 seconds bit does work as well. Carlo does provide a great website with a lot of pictures on how to build this robot. I'll link it in the description below. This list that I'm going to use of non-printed parts is a little different than Carlo's, but these are the parts that it took me to get the robot to work, so it might be a little different from you. Non-printed parts are an MG90S servo with its accessory kit, at least three MG995 servos with their accessory kits. I highly recommend you get a couple extra MG995 servos. If you want to see why, stay tuned to the end of this video. A couple servo extensions can't hurt. Around 25 six millimeter ball bearings. I just have them in this coaster so they don't roll away. One 606 bearing. Four M4 by 20 cap head screws. Two M4 by 30 cap head screws. One M4 by 40 cap head screw. One M6 by 25 cap head screw. One M6 washer. I use a couple of 5mm nylon washers for the gripper servo, but you can probably use 5mm regular washers. Two pieces of M4 threaded rod, one 60mm in length and one 33mm in length. This is what the arm rotates on. Eight M4 lock nuts, five M3 lock nuts, two M3 by 25 screws, four M3 by 20 screws, one M3 by 15 screw, one M3 by 12 screw, and one M3 by 7 screw. You'll also need some sort of 5 volt power supply. I'm just using a regular PC power supply, that seems to work well enough. And I'm using a Palulu servo controller for this build. This is a 6 channel. This is the most expensive part of this build, but you could also use our Arduino just fine. You'll also need assorted USB cables and power cables to hook the whole thing up. Now let's get building. The first thing I recommend you do is plug all your servos into your controller board. Then we'll power the controller board on and go into the software and make sure all the servos are set to the neutral position. This makes things a lot easier when you're mounting the servos later. Plug all your servos in. In this case, I'm going to use 5, 4, 3, and 2. Remember, the brown wire is the negative and those go to the outside pin. Hook up your controller board via USB to your computer. Then hook up your 5 volt power supply to your board. Remember, the outside pin is negative. Turn your power supply on. Go grab the Palulu controller software. There will be a link to it in the description. 
You can click next all the way through the install and then click closed. Now open up your controller software. Enable the four servos that we're using. And make sure the slider bar is set to the middle value. This will make sure the servo is in the neutral position. This gives you a wider range left and right. For now, we can unplug USB, unplug the power, and then unplug all the servos. We'll come back to this later. Next thing we'll do is we'll take the main base and we'll install one of the 995 servos with the gear facing the center of the part. Now if you have the type of servo where the cable does not remove, you can use a trick to get it in this tight fit area. On my servos, I remove these four screws and then remove the bottom plate. That allows me to move the wire back so I can slide it into the part. Be careful, you don't want to ruin your servos. Once it's in, you can put the plate back on. Now that the servo's back together, we can flip it over and we can mount the servos using the mount screws that came with the servo kit. The base servo is mounted. Now this is probably the tricky part of this build. You want to take three plain M3 nuts and put them in these slots in the base. One here, one here, and one here. They're a really tight fit, so you might have to get a knife or a file to get those in. Once these nuts are in, we'll take our plate and we'll press in our 606 bearing. Then our plate will go in here and we'll attach this with three M320 screws. Now we'll take the driving gear, again I'm using the 25 tooth, and we'll screw it down to the circle horn that came with your servo kit. I'm just using one of the servo mounting screws and I cut the end off of it to make it shorter. And since the servo is in the neutral position, it doesn't matter how it goes on the servo. Now we'll take the upper base part and we'll press in an M6 locking nut that I forgot to tell you about in the BOM. Then we'll take two M3 lock nuts and put them in the base driven gear. This will attach over these holes with two M3 25mm screws from the top. Now we'll put our M6 washer on our M6 by 25mm bolts. Then we'll fill this groove full of 6mm ball bearings, roughly 25. Now we'll take the upper main base and with this horn pointing to the back of the robot, we'll set it on top of those ball bearings. Now carefully, while pressing the top of the main base onto those ball bearings, flip the whole assembly over and install your 6mm bolt. Make sure you get it tight enough where the ball bearings won't move around, but not so tight that the gear binds. Now you need to attach the base drive gear to the servo with an M3 by 8 millimeter screw. Now you can put your base cover on. Now take the main arm while it's curved backwards and the vertical driver lever and put it on the main base with the shorter piece of threaded rod. Make sure the rod goes all the way through and it's flush with both of the plastic parts on both sides. Note there's no need to put nuts on these, the servo horns will hold them in. Now grab two of your 995 servos and your accessory kits. The servos that I got only came with a double sided horn, so I just cut one arm off. The horn will look like this. On this side of the robot, since the servos are in the neutral position, mount the servo so that the vertical arm is pretty much straight up and down, and the horizontal arm is kind of level. Just get it close. Then mount it up with the screws that came with the servo kit. That servo's mounted up nice and snug, we can move to the other side. On this side, the servo horn can go pretty much straight up and down. Once again, fasten it with the servo mounting screws that came with the kit. Now that the bottom three servos are installed, we'll move to building the arm. Now take one of your straight links and on the narrow end, mount it with the rib on the outside of the arm into this arm part. 
use a 4 millimeter 20 screw and a self-locking nut. Now we'll take the angled link and with the rib part facing the outside of the arm again on the other side, we'll mount it onto this arm with an M4 20 millimeter bolt and lock nut. Now the connecting links are in place. Now we'll take the main horizontal arm and the triangle link and we'll attach it to the main vertical arm. This will be done with the M4 60 millimeter rod. You'll need two lock nuts, one on each side for that. The main horizontal arm will set on this side, while the triangle piece will be flipped around and set on this side. Now you can insert your M4 threaded rod. I tighten that up with a couple of sets of pliers. Now we can attach our links. The angled length will go here with an M4 20 millimeter bolt. And then our straight length will connect to the top of the horizontal arm right here, but this time we'll have to use an M4 30 millimeter bolt. We need a little more length. Now both links are installed. Now we'll set up the gripper. The instructions tell you to set up the gripper later, but I've found it's a lot easier to set it all up before you attach your triangle piece to your arm. Now take your M90S servo and mount it to the top of the gripper frame. The gear portion will go towards the front of the robot arm. Use the screws that came with the servo kit. Now that the servo is mounted, take your right gripper arm and install it on the underside of the gripper base. We'll use an M3 by 17 millimeter screw or something close to that, and an M3 lock nut. Now that your right gripper arm is installed, you'll take your left gripper arm and link it up with the right gripper arm, and then put your gripper drive gear then put your gripper drive gear on top of that. This will all be installed with an M3 20mm screw and a lock nut. Now the two gripper arms are installed and moving properly. Now we'll take the one-sided horn from the servo kit, I clipped the end off of mine, and we'll install it in the drive gear of the gripper arm. My drive gear didn't quite clear the pinchers, so I put two M5 washers on the servo before I put the drive gear on. With the washers on, I like to put the servo gear on with the pinchers slightly open. So this will be somewhat the neutral position for the gripper arm. Now put the servo screw in. Now we'll slide the pincher arm onto the modular triangle portion that goes onto the front of the bot. It just slides in right here. And then you attach it from the back with an M3 12 millimeter screw and an M3 lock nut on the front. Now we can put it back on the arm. The bottom triangle piece will go on the end of the arm with an M4 40 millimeter screw and the appropriate lock nut. Then the top part of the triangle gets connected with your last straight link. The wide side goes toward the triangle, flat side goes to the top of the arm. The top of the arm takes an M4 20 millimeter bolt the front of the arm takes an M4 40 millimeter bolt. Of course, the appropriate lock nut. And one more lock nut. Now the physical build is complete. I'm going to attach a servo extension onto my gripper servo. Then I'm going to cable all my servos to my Palulu board. For this build, I'm going to use the base servo as number 5. What I'm going to call the arm servo back here as number 4. What I call the wrist servo is number three, and the gripper servo is number two. On all these servos, brown was ground, red was positive, and orange was signal. Always on these Palulu servo boards, the negative's on the outside of the board. Now all the servo cables are hooked up, we'll hook the USB up again to the computer. You should start seeing activity lights. Then we'll hook up our 5 volt power to the Palulu board. It's the last plug on the corner, outside is negative. Now we can go back into the Palulu software, make sure you're connected to the board again, and enable these servos. Now from here you can adjust the servos how you like, but make sure the slider does move all the servos left and right. These are the pincher fingers. This is the wrist. This is the arm. And this is the base.
you will want to bolt this thing down to a piece of wood or something because it does get pretty active. From there, the easiest way to build cool sequences is on the Sequences tab. From the status screen, you can position your arm how you like, hit Save Frame, and then the Sequences tab, you can run that sequence or change its timing how you like to make it do cool sequences. You can play them in a loop or save them or save them permanently to your board as you wish. You can even make them into scripts. The one thing I do caution about while you're setting up your arm and playing around in the servo software, if the servo is getting too hot, it will burn up. Try to use neutral measurements as much as possible inside the servo software. You don't want them struggling at all. And there it is, the 3D printed Easy Robot Arm MK2. Thanks to Carlo Francisco for putting all this together. It's a great project. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but again, a really satisfying project that can do some really cool things. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below. Please check out all of Carlo's things on Thingiverse and maybe make one of your own. Say goodbye, robot arm. And thanks for watching. Oh.